Hello, this is the Provoke Prawn, and this is the Rocket Burst Pro Air. This is a lightweight gaming mouse from Rocket, and it's an update to their wired version of this mouse that I reviewed back in 2020, which seems like a long time ago now. But this is a striking mouse. It's obviously available in different colors, black or white. And obviously the white version is very striking indeed. This mouse is interesting for a number of reasons. It has Bluetooth connectivity over Bluetooth 5.2, also dual connectivity with 2.4 gigahertz wireless. It has up to 100 hours of battery life and a water and dust resistant shell with four RGB lighting zones with Rockat's AMO intelligent lighting. It also packs in some optical switches up to 19,000 DPI with an optical sensor, 400 IPS, 50 Gs acceleration and a lot more besides. It's also NVIDIA Reflex compatible, which I'll talk a bit about later on. But I've done a video on separately that I'll link to in the description. Now, this is obviously an unboxing video and I'll be talking to you about my experiences with the mouse and what it's like to use and as i said i reviewed the wired version so it's quite pleasant to be able to check out the wireless one i quite enjoyed the wired one and with only a few small complaints but it is a very affordable mouse coming in at around 90 pounds sterling and roughly the same in dollars so it's affordable it's lightweight it packs in over 100 hours of battery life it also has rapid charging so as a usb-c cable that you'll see included in the box which gives you up to five hours of extra charge with just 10 minutes of being plugged in which means that essentially you don't have to plug it in for very long at all in order to get going for a lot longer so it's very convenient in that way and obviously at 100 hours battery life as well you can just keep gaming for quite some time also has titan optical switches and i'll give you a sound test and a look at those a bit later on now this uses the same sort of bionic shell which essentially means that it has holes in it you will have seen some of that already in the initial shots and i'm going to show you some more of it in a minute in the box you'll find that it has the usb wireless dongle obviously conveniently located in there and the charging cable and what you need to get going now this dongle obviously plugs into your pc and gives you a 2.4 gigahertz connection but on the underside you'll see there's a switch mm -hmm. to switch over into bluetooth mode so you have the option to use bluetooth 5.2 to connect to other devices you could connect it to your pc and that will give you a not as low latency experience. So for the best experience, you want to use it in the 2.4 gigahertz wireless connection. The side of the mouse has some nice large thumb buttons that I'll show you in a second. And then when you're not using it, you have a convenient dock for the dongle on the underside as well. There's also a button there to switch between profiles. And I'll talk a bit more about profiles and such when I show you the Swarm software at the end of this video. Right now, I want to give you some shots and show off what it's like with the RGB lighting on. And I find it's really hard to do this justice, actually, because it's sort of overpowered by my video lighting. And it looks a lot nicer in person than it does in this shot. But I'll show you some of the accents here. And you can see the way they've reduced the weight is essentially to have that same sort of honeycomb shell that you see in a lot of lightweight gaming mice but it's on the underside of this outer shell which means you see the light shining through and you have that whole effect but you don't have the problem with dust and dirt getting into the mouse which is obviously a bonus over time the other thing that i've noticed is this one doesn't seem to get dirty i've been using it for a couple of weeks now after this initial clips obviously and it still looks great. I don't think this is going to get dirty over time. It hasn't picked up loads of oils off my fingers and things like that. It's not picking up dirt. And I'm not a particularly clean gamer. I occasionally like to munch food at my desk while I'm playing. And it hasn't been a problem. Now, I will leave a sound test at the end of the video so you can hear the switches. As I said, these are optical switches. And I found that there's a very small gap. There's very little travel between when you touch in the button and pressing it to activate the switch. So it activates really quickly and easily and in a satisfying way. It gives you a good solid click out of it. Obviously also conveniently set up in a number of ways. There are heat treated PTFE feet on the underside. 
there is essentially just two, one at the front, one at the back. They're reasonably large, though, and I will, it does fly about the desk quite nicely. And as I said, it weighs in at 81 grams, or at least that's the claim, which means that it's quite lightweight. It's certainly not the lightest mouse that I've tried, but it's still decent weight. The RGB lighting is also very pleasant on the eye, and you have multiple zones there. And it's certainly not as striking as the Cone XP, which I've done a video on recently, which I think is the best looking Rocket mouse that I've seen and possibly the best looking mouse I've seen in a long time and more comfortable than this I will say out of the two I definitely prefer the Cone XP however if you want a sort of symmetrical mouse from the Burst Pro something that's affordable and doesn't have quite as many buttons but still has a nice comfortable fit and this is it as a detachable USB-C cable for charging purposes which I mentioned already gives you a fast charging capability as well Obviously, USB-C goes into there, and then the USB-A part plugs into your PC to give you a good charge. One thing that you will see is that it's quite difficult to plug and unplug. It doesn't plug in very easily. Perhaps over time, that will loosen up a little bit as you pull it in and out. However, because you don't have to plug it that in that often, because it does charge quite quickly, it's not that much of a problem, and also the length of the charge stays nicely. You can see me throwing it about on the mouse mat here, and it's reasonably slick and easy to maneuver and certainly very comfortable to use as well also doesn't give up any resistance from what i've seen and it doesn't have a lot of sort of obnoxious noise from the underside either so obviously your pdfe treated feet are going to give you the bonus of that but you might find on other mice that some bits scuff and there's certainly no problem with that here now here's a bit of a sound test so you can get an idea of what the switches sound like. A few things that I will quickly note is mine does seem to have a different sound per switch, like they haven't been matched up perfectly, so the right sounds different from the left. The mouse wheel is also satisfying, doesn't have any extra play in it, or side to side bubble or anything like that, and it certainly isn't obnoxious in the sound it gives off. Now throwing it on the scales, you'll see mine weighs in somewhere between 84 and 83 grams, the claim is 81 you've got to give them a little bit of leeway for it and it's certainly not super heavy now i'll leave some extra sound clips at the end in case you weren't satisfied with that but here you can see a side on view now what you'll notice is there's a very subtle sort of honeycomb finish on the sides which acts as a grip essentially for this and it gives you a sort of slight textured feel to the side of the mouse which makes it easy to hold on to and easy to use as well and I found it to be very nice now the thing complaint I had about the Burst Pro and I have the same sort of problem with the Burst Pro Air is it's relatively small I don't find it to be big enough for my hand it is nicely ergonomically designed with this sort of symmetrical shape but it certainly doesn't have the same nice sloping effect that the Cohen XP does and it doesn't fit in my hand as nicely as I'd like. However, if you have small hands, your hands are on the smaller side, I feel like you might find this fits nicely. I use a kind of either a palm or claw grip style, and it's just a little bit too small for me. That is not uncomfortable, though, by any means. I have enjoyed gaming with it, and I probably will carry on using it for a little while longer until I move on to the next one or go back to the Cone XP, depending on how much work I've got to do. And... Yeah, it's a striking mouse, and I think that certainly one of the things for me is that it also hasn't picked up any dirt and it doesn't mar over time. I don't know what it'll be like in a year's time, for example, but I think the materials that they've used on the top should be really easy to keep clean, and also just the overall style of it is very good. You can see some more close-up shots here with sort of amount of pressure that you have to press on to activate the switch now these are optical switches so they're activated with a light beam which means they'll register clicks a lot quicker and also 
that the switches should in theory last a lot longer. They have a debounce customization option within Rockat Swarm software as well. So you can customize the debounce level. So if you do experience any double clicks, you can actually sort that out. One of the interesting points here is the optical sensor has been changed from the wired version. So I'll leave the specs in the description. But what this means is that you can now go up to 19,000 DPI where you could only go up to 16,000 before. So it's a bit more responsive in that way. So it's worth bearing that in mind. You have more programmable levels. And I'll show you all this within the software. You obviously have that DPI button on top, switch between the various DPI levels, and then a profile button on the underside to switch between the various different profiles that you can set up in there as well. Close up shots of it, and you'll see the RGB light bleed from the underside and also from the top. It's not as striking as the RGB lighting on the Cone XP. However, you can see it does leave a nice glow on your hand and the surrounding mouse mat area, and also obviously nice lighting in all those departments. It uses Rockat's AMO intelligent lighting, which means it sort of changes over time, but also reacts to you. I found that the lighting also turns off intelligently after a short period of time when you're not using the mouse, which then increases the battery longevity. And it also dims as well. So when it doesn't turn off, it starts bright and then it goes into a slight dimmer mode and then it goes off completely. So it's quite intelligent in the way it's set up, obviously, in that way, which then means that it should last a bit longer and keep going for longer which means you plug it in less which is obviously a bonus with a wireless mouse so all in all a very nice mouse for the money really easy on the eye great fun to game with i found it very accurate to use i've not had any problems with the side buttons which i find stick out nicely and are nice and large as well which is brilliant because i'm a big fan of using side buttons for various different things it certainly doesn't have as many buttons as the Cone xp but it's another nice addition to the burst lineup. Here we are within Rockat Swarm software. Now, I want to note something immediately. When you're at the bottom, you'll see that you have five different profiles down here, and they have different colors assigned to them. So you have purple, white, red, green, and yellow. When you press the profile button on the underside, the mouse changes color, and it changes to that color for each of the profiles. So you know what profile you're using based on the color and obviously then you could have different settings for different games or different use cases for example video editing or in windows versus gameplay or whatever else so that's pretty neat and you can do that obviously at a hardware level program these in save it and then you have five different profiles programmed on the mouse and you can see which one you're switching to with ease you also have the dpi switching at the top here and you can switch between the five different levels and you can see as default it's 400, 800, 1200, 1600 and 3200 but you can go all the way up to 19,000 if you're so inclined. Pressing the DPI button obviously goes between those and you can remove levels if you don't want them. So you can see I've removed one of the levels now and now I've only got four. So if you don't need loads you could just set two for example if that was all you wanted and you could just switch between those two regularly. The advanced settings, you'll see what I was talking about with energy saving. This is worth noting. So it's on as default, which means that the RGB lighting will dim as necessary. Another thing to note is you also have a signal strength meter here. So in here, if you're seeing problems with the 2.4 gigahertz, you can check the dongle strength and what the signal's like. You can see mine's excellent and it is very short distance from me because my PC is plugged in next to me, so it's not a problem. You can see you have 1000 hertz polling rate and you can adjust the liftoff distance as well from very low and low and you can calibrate it and also you can customize the debounce time as well. So this is one of the things that they say if you find that you have a double click issue over time you can just go in here and adjust the debounce timing. RGB lighting as usual you can choose between various different profiles, wave, fully lit, heartbeat, breathing, blinking. I I mean, you can use it a battery indicator as well, so you get an idea of the battery. I generally prefer using the AMO intelligent lighting, not only because it matches up with other Rockat products, but just because it gives a nice glow and it sort of changes intelligently in various different ways that make it interesting. You can see that you have the different points here as well. So you can choose to light up different bits of the mouse in different colors. So there's four different points as standard you have the back part of the mouse you have each mouse button and the mouse wheel as well so you can actually customize what each color is individually if you want to go to that level 
button assignment, you obviously have all the standard buttons in here, but you can also do things like assigning a macro. You also have the easy shift functionality, which is one of my favorite things about Rocket products. So essentially we can go in here, we can set this to easy shift, which is essentially means that this DPI button is now an easy shift functionality. And then what you can do is you can go in and you can assign another button. For example, you might just have that as R for reload. So now when I press easy shift and left button, it will then do R. So now when I press the DPI button and tap my left mouse button, it's now doing R. Obviously when you let go of that, you can obviously choose your easy shift button to make life a bit easier. And you might be using the Rockat keyboard where you could assign it, which is then obviously set it up in there make life a little bit easier but it's the fact that you can customize secondary layers of actions in here including macros and a lot of other things that make this really interesting so this has been the provoke Cron reviewing yet another superb rocket mouse i really like the burst pro air for a number of different reasons it's a great mouse affordable good looking customizable and has a lot to offer let me know in the comments if you've got any questions. Stick around for the sound test if you want to hear more. And thanks for watching. This has been the Provoke Prawn. Hope you found this video useful, interesting, hilarious, or otherwise. Take a look at these other videos that I think you might find interesting as well. And have a look at the description for links and other information you might find useful. Click that join button to see the benefits of being a member of my YouTube channel. And most importantly, have a great life.